What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG. YouTube.com down there. We like magic. You never know. Today, there were actually some serious, honest to God, Aether Revolt spoilers that finally happened. We've been waiting for like a week now. And we got some. Just a couple so far today, but there may be a few later on. But I want to go ahead and cover what we've got because there are a couple of really exciting cards that are not only going to be in the main set, but are also part of the Masterpiece Cycle, the Kaladesh Inventions, which is pretty cool too. The first thing I want to cover is Paradox Engine. This is five mana for a legendary artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. <laughs> well, that seems, I think, pretty good. Um, but for five mana is pretty high, and it doesn't usually do anything the turn that it comes into play. And if you're in top deck mode when you do draw it, then it won't like do anything until the next turn, and then it won't have any fuel and blah blah. Like there are definitely some issues with this card that I'm not hearing a whole lot of people talk about. This card is already being hyped, and there are definitely issues with it. See the previous 10 seconds of this video if you want to recap. But <laughs> there are, there are some cool things about the card, so let's talk about those. Well, I saw a bunch of people mention this with Etherworks Marvel in the same sentence. I don't know about that. I don't think that deck can really fit it <laughs> at all. Um, that deck is already really, really tight. And I don't know that it wants a five mana artifact that doesn't do anything when it comes into play and all that. Although it, it could untap your Marvel, you know, whatever, but you still have to have the energy. So I'm just, I'm not really seeing that be a thing. But the first thing I thought of was Cryptolith Rite when I saw this card. You know, maybe Cryptolith Rite could come back. Although, again, not sure. In the Cryptolith Rite deck that you'd have to build to run this card, you have to play a few copies of this, a few copies of Cryptolith Rite. You'd have to probably run some card draw and some Emrakuls and then a bunch of small creatures to make rights work so that's an awful lot of cards and a pretty tight deck list and I'm not sure that that works but still we have Cryptolith right and a bunch of mana rocks in the format you know we have like Corrupted Graphstone and Cultivator's Caravan, Hedron Archive, Hedron Crawler even so I'm just gonna put a picture of Metalcraft Colossus right here for no reason. Now the card looks pretty cool in other formats too but you're probably gonna have to keep drawing cards in order to keep this thing actually going but in standard at least there are plenty of ways to do that and in older formats there are but tons of ways to do it but in standard we have like glimmer of genius this is a pretty obvious one we also have like epiphany at the drown yard and even um pour over the pages you remember that card yeah that that thing actually looks like it goes pretty well with this so there's no shortage of you know uh, fuel cards, and we don't care if the fuel cards cost a lot of mana because we've we've got the mana, you know, if we're untapping a bunch of creatures that we can then tap, um, or mana rocks for that matter. So we've got the mana, we don't care how much these card draw pieces cost, and some of these at the higher mana, you know, four and five mana are actually really good, like Glimmer of Genius. And pour over the pages again looks pretty sweet. There's also the more practical stuff about the card that's not related to like standard combos and stuff. Um, first of all, if you swing in with all your guys and then you play a spell, well, look at that. Put all your guys back on defense. That's pretty cool right there. Something else that's really cool to point out, even though we've only seen like one card with this ability that I remember, is uh, that improvise is going to be a mechanic in this format. So that's pretty cool. You know, we can untap all of our artifacts with this thing and we can just use them to improvise something big into play. At least something to think about. This looks like it would work really well with Improvise. And I guess the last thing to point out is like Flash Creatures, I guess, which we have some good ones in Standard. We have Spell Queller, we have Avacyn, you know, and Avacyn seems pretty sweet with this, but you know, at least the play there, conceptually, is swing in with all your guys, and then when they go on their next turn, they assume that you're not going to be able to block. So they swing in, you play your Avacyn, untap all your guys, and they have Indestructible to go on defense. That seems like a pretty bomb play and all, but I just don't know that like creature-heavy decks are going to want to fit this unless they're doing something very specific. All that said, though, in formats like Commander or EDH, whatever, like this... This looks like a pretty good card. <laughs> you know, there's definitely a lot of ways to abuse it. Much better mana rocks in something like EDH. You know, you have Sol Ring, Mana Vault, and all that stuff. Grim Monolith, Basalt Monolith. But anyway, um, so pretty highly abusable in, in those formats. And we'll have to wait and see what it does there because, you know, the heavy artifact decks look like they could use this. Same thing, by the way, with Tron. Um, and then the next card we'll look at is probably an include an EDH Tron decks, but while we're still on this one, I'm not totally sold on it. It obviously does a bunch of cool stuff, which I've just outlined, but I just don't know what decks in competitive formats like Modern or Standard want to fit something like this and let it's, unless it's part of like a, an ultimate combo, but we'll have to, I, I'm not sure 
about those. Like the ultimate commons that we have that do stuff like this, we probably already have better ones. Like Just Guy Ascendancy exists, although this doesn't require colored mana, but it is two spots on the curve higher. You see, I just I'm not sure. Like combo decks want to play something that doesn't cost five mana, but you know, Etherworks Marvel costs four. And we're doing that right now, so who knows? All right, on to that other card I was talking about. This is Planar Bridge. It costs six mana for another legendary artifact. You pay eight of anything, and you tap it. You search your library for a permanent card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. All right, so again, Commander and EDH players, just have yourself a better Planar Portal. <laughs> you know, sort of a better Planar Portal. It's limited to permanence, but it does. It puts it right onto the battlefield, so, like, come on. <laughs> what else could you want? Remember how I brought up Tron players a second ago? This card... Even more so, and perhaps even Tron in an actual, seriously competitive format, like Modern or something. Like, people are already talking about that, and there's certainly no shortage of, like, super fast ways to get this into play, you know. Um, in Standard, I've heard people talk about Etherworks Marvel, again, in the same sentence with this card, and I'm just not... Uh, like, why? <laughs> like, Etherworks Marvel is probably, in Standard at least, the much better card, because turn 4 Emrakuls are probably more possible with an Etherworks Marvel, and that actually matters more because Etherworks Marvel casts the card, so you get those cast triggers on your Eldrazi Titans. This does not cast the card, which kind of sucks. Still get your ETB triggers, but you won't get cast triggers, which in Standard means an awful lot, and even in Modern to some extent. All in all, this will probably see a butt-ton of play in, like, EDH, you know, it seems like... Definitely the kind of card that you run, and you kind of don't have a reason not to run, <laughs> you know, in a lot of decks, at least. So, definitely makes a splash there, but as far as other formats, I'll have to be convinced, because a total of 14 mana is, that's a, that's a lot of freaking mana. And right now, in Standard, we really don't have a way to make, like, tons of fast mana. Now, I just showed you Cryptolith Right and, you know, the, the other card that got spoiled today. That creates a lot of mana really, really fast, <laughs> you know. Um, so that could be a thing, but again, we're, we're fitting an awful lot of slots in a Cryptolith Right deck that we should be filling with smaller creatures. So I just don't I'll ultimately think that will probably fall apart as a strategy. I won't say this has been for EDH play and nothing else at all. Again, I have some hope for Tron and Modern, but aside from that, won't see it making a splash in standard, even though it's obviously crazy. It's just really, really prohibitive. By the way, final caveat right here. I just said it won't make a splash in standard. Of course, we haven't seen the rest of Aether Revolt. For all we know, we have something that produces 14 mana on turn 3 and completely breaks the game. So, who knows? That's all the spoilers for today, and I'm sorry, I talked really, really fast in this video. I wanted to get all my thoughts out quickly and succinctly, if not succinctly. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but I'm in sort of a time crunch right now, and I apologize for that. But if there's more spoilers tonight... I'll be back with those for you because I'm dedicated and I love you guys. So for now, that's all I've got as far as my analysis. Let me know if I missed anything important about these cards down there in the sideboard. And like the video if you like the video. Do all the YouTube stuff. Hit the bell. Subscribe if you're new. Blah, blah, blah. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Sincerely, thanks for watching, my wizards.